never-ending story. Ah, story. Something, something in my eye. Well, I guess that's gotta go in the video. We're back. I'm back. <laughs> One Piece, 1025. Hi guys. What's up, y'all? <laughs> you know what time it is. It's about to be that time. Damn, son, where'd you find this? This world doesn't need two dragons. Up yours, Kaido. There can't be two Kaidos. Yeah, yeah, yeah. let them fight. Uh, as usual, we're going to talk about some mythology. We're going to get into some of the same things that we were talking about last week in the beach episode. If you saw that, you know what I'm talking about, okay? Because I think I'm on the right track. I think everybody's way too hyper-focused on Momotaro. And there is no pheasant yet. Yeah. We have Marco. Marco could be the pheasant. Uh, Aokiji could show up. Literally blue pheasant. Aokiji, blue pheasant. Uh, there could be something else that, you know, we, we don't know. But I don't think that that's where Oda's going with this. The, the representation of Momotaro, yeah, it's there in Momonosuke. But the, the real representation of Momotaro is Tama. Okay? Tama has, you know, tamed... Literally, a monkey and a dog, not necessarily a pheasant, but, you know, the entirety of <laughs> all of the gifters now. I'm sure somewhere along the lines there, there's some sort of a pheasant. We just need that four tricks action, you know, then we'll, you know, we'll really get in there. Savage. What I think Oda is actually doing here is just referencing the top three gods in the Shinto religion. And it became so obvious in 1024 with all of this Amaterasu business. So what we have here, and what I brought up last week, and came true this week because this was all about what I was talking about, is Amaterasu, Sukuyomi, Susanoo, Amaterasu, the sun goddess, basically the embodiment of Japan a ruler of heaven and the you know the Shinto belief and all of that the bringer of the day Yamato okay why Yamato because Amaterasu hid from the world at one point inside of a cave which shares the same name of the cave that was in 1024 the way that she was lured out of the cave was she was tricked by using the Yata no Kagami okay which anybody who's really well versed with attacks in One Piece will remember that that was one of Kizaru's moves in the archipelago. Used it against Apu, I think, right before he attacked Drake. In this chapter, we get Yamato using an attack called Yama Kagami, right? Now, Yama means mountain, Kagami means mirror, uh, but Yama, I think, is also a play on just Yamato's name, which has Yama inside of it. Uh, so it's really just saying y Yamato Mirror, right? I think that that's really where, where it's coming from, but it's also a play on this Yata no Kagami, which was the mirror that was used to lure Amaterasu out of the cave. Amaterasu, after hiding, saw this beautiful goddess and was like, wait, someone has taken my light and has, has brought all of this? Uh, and walks out and finds out that Amaterasu was just looking at themselves. <laughs> but they sealed the cave, and Amaterasu didn't, you know, go in there anymore. Now, um, will we see a Kizaru and Yamato connection in the future? Maybe. Could be interesting. Sukuyomi. Okay, this is the ruler of the moon. The moon god. Okay? The kanji for Kozuki literally has moon in it. So, and we know that all of the uh, followers of the Kazuki clan have crescent moon tattoos. So the moon imagery is certainly there. 
There's also, uh, you know, a lot about Tsukuyomi that involves the passage of time. And we now have Momonosuke, who has not only jumped 20 years into the future, but has now been aged up 20 years. Okay, in the mythology, Tsukuyomi and Amaterasu, even though they were brother and sister, had uh, a relationship and they had children. So I don't know if Oda's going to go that route. So all of the Tama and Momo shippers and all that stuff when they were older, you know, in the in two piece or whatever, like I, Oda might actually go this awkward Yamato Momonosuke route, even though he's mentally an eight year old. I hope he doesn't. <laughs> Susanoo. Susanoo is the ruler of the sea and storms. We know that the D clan will always bring about another storm. And I said that the three deities of Wano were going to end up being Yamato, Momonosuke, and Luffy. That they would be the pillars of the of the remaining part of this arc and actually the foundation of this arc and that's what we're that's what we're seeing now. This chapter was all about these three characters. Yamato, Momonosuke, and Luffy, now all going up against Kaido. So it'll be interesting if Oda is trying to do this uh, Yamato, Momonosuke, Luffy thing with Amaterasu, Tsukuyomi, and Susanoo. Uh, Another one. Okay, this isn't necessarily exactly the way that I saw everything going. I don't know if we're going to end up, you know, we, we talked about Luffy potentially fighting Jack before all of this happened, Yamato maybe getting defeated, uh, but the way that 1024 shaped everything up, it sort of led us to this conclusion. And that's the thing with the chapters, is that every chapter can change everything. One chapter can change everything. And I'm here for it. I don't care. I don't care about being right or wrong. I just want a good story, and that's what we're getting. So, uh, I really love the attack that that Yamato used, Yamakagami. Uh, essentially, if I'm reading this correctly, they have created a shell, a layer of ice, and use that as like sort of a protection against the Thunder Bagua. Uh, so that's cool. That's interesting. It's something new. It's something unique. You know, it's not even something that we've necessarily seen Aokiji use. So we finally got the full never-ending story that we were expecting. Luffy riding Falcor going through Onigashima. Uh, so that was a nice twist. And it was necessary, right? Because everybody's got to see Luffy. And the people that know Momonosuke may, may be able to put the pieces together that, you know, Momo got bigger. Uh, but, you know, morale will come back now that they've seen Luffy. We took a little trip going to all the floors. Luffy makes it to the roof. I just thought maybe Kaido wouldn't be there yet. Would be heading to the live floor. Kaido could still go to the live floor. But what we've got now is finally the melding, the meeting of the two dragons, the twin dragons, uh, dueling dragons. <laughs> the, the, the two Spider-Mans pointing at each other. <laughs> You're not you, but who are you if I'm not me? I'm you, but I'm not me. Are you me or am I you? Oh, man. Uh, it's interesting. We knew that this was going to happen. I've been waiting for this. I've been waiting for this moment. Really, I've been waiting for what's going to come next week um, when they actually start getting into some dialogue, right? Because there's conversations that need to be had. Kaido's going to want to know how Momonosuke is also a dragon, which is going to bring up Vegapunk which could clue us into a flashback involving Vegapunk, or at least the, uh, you know, silhouette version of Vegapunk while we get context on the experiments that were done on Kaido. We know that as a character, Kaido is prone to respecting perseverance. Uh, and while we have actually seen Momonosuke persevere through this arc, I don't know if it's necessarily the way that Kaido necessarily respects it, right? Uh, we do get this great moment of Momonosuke, you know, once again, claiming his name like a man, right? 
even though he stutters a little bit at the beginning, he finishes strong. I'm Kozuki Momonosuke, and I am the man who will become the Shogun of Wano. Kaido is slightly impressed, but as he believes that there are too many conquerors in this world, he also believes that there are too many dragons as well. Uh, we know that the end game for Monosuke is that he's he's got to hold up Onigashima like Odin held up the scabbards in the boiling pot. It's just clued in throughout the story. Yamato being the one to tell us about the uh, uh, the dragon flames in the first place, telling it to Momonosuke so that we as a reader are learning it at the same time that Momonosuke is hearing it, the person who actually needs to know about it because they're now bigger and can use this stuff. So a conversation between Momonosuke and Yamato is going to bring that not necessarily soon, but soonish, you know, probably within 10 chapters now. There's a lot of other stuff that needs to get finished before any of this will get to any sort of like final resolution. This is all on purpose. This is all for, this is all Oda laying the foreshadowing and setting up the narrative clues that Momonosuke is going to do this. So get ready, people. He's going to do it. Um, and it would be great if that is the moment when, you know, Momonosuke really leans into uh, his fears, conquers them, flies with his eyes open, all of that with confidence, and saves his people temporarily, potentially. You know, maybe he... Maybe he doesn't actually save them, but gives them enough time to get away from the flower capital. I don't expect M M Momonosuke to like move Onigashima far enough away uh, to where it's not on Wano anymore. It's going to crash land into something. It's just, what is that something going to be? This really could lean us into bits and pieces of a Kaido flashback. Um, I don't know if that's what we're going to actually get for 1026, but... You know, that's that's up in the air. I think that 1026 is going to be very heavily Momonosuke-focused, uh, at least at the start of the chapter. Kaido and Momonosuke talking. Combating this idea that Kaido has of perseverance. That Momonosuke hasn't earned anything in his life, that everything's been handed to him, right? Um, and I think that that idea in my own headcanon got lost in translation in one of the previous videos, uh, where I said that uh, Momonosuke didn't earn his fruit, and I got a lot of comments like, how do you earn a fruit? Uh, and I was going off of what I've talked about in previous videos, of, is it, talking strictly from Kaido, and that I believe that he will have a conversation with Momonosuke where it's like, you, you know, you didn't, you didn't earn Wano, you didn't earn your age now, and, you know, you didn't earn your power and all this, like, if coming from the place of Kaido saying, I worked for all of this. I took Wano. I took this. I trained and got stronger. I did all of these things. Like, I'm a man. You're a boy pretending to be a man. So that's where I was necessarily coming from uh, a couple of, you know, chapters ago when I was talking about that. And I think that that's, you know, sort of the meaty conversation that we're going to get into very soon. Uh, at least I hope so. Could, you know, really contextualize the two characters very well. At the end of the day, this was a pretty straightforward chapter. It was cool seeing uh, Luffy go Snake Man and have that dual attack with Yamato, uh, you know, riding Momonosuke. You know, that was uh, that, that was a lot of fun. And then this is the first time that we've seen him go into Snake Man and then jump back out into his regular form. Uh, we've seen it with Bound Man going back to um, the triple attack that happened uh, with Law and Kid. And we also saw it in 990, when he did that attack with Drake, went in and out of that. So, Luffy's learning, the color spread, it's finally put together all three pieces, okay? Uh, and what's really awesome is that uh, Banpresto and Bandai, uh, the people who make the figures that I collect, will be making figures of every single character on that spread over the course of the next year and a half because <laughs> that's how long it's going to take uh, for all of them to come out uh, but that also means that everybody that voted for whoop slap has now made even more history because they have forced this company to make a f another figure of whoop slap because there already is a figure of whoop slap so now there's 
two figures of Whoopflap, and plenty of characters that have never received a figure ever. Hello, darkness, my old friend. So I'm going to wrap things up here, guys. Thanks so much for your support. Uh, for everybody that has bought some merch, people are sending me their, you know, pictures of themselves wearing the, the clothes in the Discord. Certified oh, drip. It. Certified drip indeed. Anybody who still wants to get some stuff, uh, link is below. I'll be adding new items soon. And uh, I want to thank the new members and the people that have rejoined. Uh, so shout out to... Uh, Hero Life, Hero 3 Life, actually, uh, and Kuma on the Moon for joining, and to Ray Kaminari, Enigma Sword, Marios L, and Maximilian Hofer for rejoining. So appreciate to you guys, appreciate all of you, everybody that supports all of this. You know, I love the community that we've created. Uh, it's great, it's great. I'll see everybody in two weeks for 1026, but we're also going to have a break week stream next Friday. Okay, we're going to be ranking drip, certified right? drip. We're going to be talking about the drippiest, the sauciest characters in One Piece. All right, so you know we're talking about characters like Doflamingo, Sarkis, Papagoo, Crocodile. All right, and we're going to even talk about the people that are uncertified. We're going to be talking about certified drip uncertified drip who's in the lavish bracket and who's not <laughs> it's it's gonna be fun i'm i'm excited that was a funny uh, suggestion and and we're going for it we're doing it all right so i'll see you guys there later savage